Last week, students from across the nation took to the streets in protest over budget cuts and tuition hikes. In New York City, high school students convened at City Hall to express their grievances. There were many. They should be glad today we are coming down to talk to the press, to talk to each other, but we have the numbers in this town. They only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight cops. So if we decided that we would rather be inside instead of outside, if we decided that we were going in to take this place over, they would be in City Councilman Charles Barron, never a man to hold back his feelings, told me why he was concerned about the cuts and the city's move towards charter schools. And I'm here because we have to put a stop to Bloomberg and Klein. They're destroying the education system. Bloomberg is more of a CEO than he is an educator, and Klein is clueless on education. So I'm here representing the voice of thousands of, of parents and students who had enough who are saying that don't shut down 20 schools so that you can bring in charter schools and pit charter schools versus public schools. We know what makes a school work. Smaller class sizes. We know what makes a school work. Teachers that know how to teach a culturally relevant curriculum, science labs, and libraries that are up to date and making sure we have after school programs, athletic programs, cultural and art programs. That's not in our system. So don't sit there and, and not have these things in our school system and then say the school failed. Well, you sat there and set it up a failure so that you can get charter schools in public schools buildings because charter schools have no capital money for buildings, for institutions. They only have programmatic Monday money. He is trying to incrementally privatize education and he's using, turning our schools into test-taking mills so that the scores can go up every period. Test prep. This, this is racism at its worst. There's 1.1 million children and 85 to 90 percent of them are black and Latino and most of the educators now are white. Most of the administrators are white and two white men who are clueless uh, running this whole system. So when you look at who's being directly affected by that, we're talking about a, a city that has 50% black male unemployment, a city that has impoverished rates in the South Bronx, Latino, in Harlem, in East New York, in Brownsville, that are extremely high. When America catches a cold, we catch pneumonia. We don't need and people who lack education understanding. We need Dr. Adlai Sanford. We need Dr. Sheila Trainum, Dr. Donald Smith, Brother G2 AUC. These are educators that they don't consult. So I'm very, very concerned about the racial component. Race still matters in education and every, it permeates every institution in America. We should be more militant. We should not allow them. It is that serious. We are talking about the future of our children, of our race, of our people, of our communities. Education is a lifeline. Education is a right, a necessity. We cannot play around with this one. If we have to take over buildings, if we have to get arrested, like we did in the 60s, we should bring that to this. If we have to shut this city down, there are 1.1 million children. Each one of them have two parents. That's 3 million people right there. We need to up the ante and be much more militant and not let them think we're just going to scream at them at these hearings as they pass the policies anyway. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because I asked a couple of the, the kids kids here whether they would whether they would join you and with, before I even finished the sentence they were screaming yes. <laughs> yes, yes, and their parents will too and our leaders will too and I'll be the first one online to get arrested. It is that serious. We got to let the mayor know, let Klein know that we are not playing games with you, that we will take this to another level. That's the only thing they understand. I also spoke to Santos Crespo, the executive vice president of Local 372, which represents the support staff of the city's public schools. He expressed worry over the people who were behind education reform. But when you look at the so-called faces of uh, uh, 
public education reformers. Uh, it's not really public ed education. Uh, all of them tend to be billionaires. Uh, you even got Walmart now involved in this whole thing. So it starts from Bill Gates from Microsoft, work, from Microsoft works its way down. Uh, that level of money that, that, they're, that, that they're throwing in that direction can be used and should be used uh, in the public schools. Why is it that they want to take out uh, a functioning uh, and although they have yet to really bring the evidence that says that the public school system is not being successful, that is not operating, they have yet to actually prove that. It basically has been a, a, a media hype. Uh, I believe that a public school is on its way to being privatized through charter schools. Even though these charter schools may start out as non-profits, but they slowly start turning around and becoming for-profits. Eva Moskowitz is a classic example. She came out of the city council. She was the chair of the education department. Now she makes more money through charter schools than the chancellor of the city of New York. How did, you know, how did, how did that happen? And unfortunately, particularly in the communities of color, uh, they have bought into the idea that the charter schools is the best way to go, that their kids somehow are going to get uh, a, a better education. What I see is that it's separate and not equal. There we have gotten, uh, uh, we've been told by students and parents how there's a strict dichotomy between the public schools in the same building, a public school versus a charter school, uh, where some principals don't even allow the kids to interact, where they've been told, you're special, you're different, even though those kids come from the same community. So now you have parents uh, fighting parents, you have kids that are saying, I am better than, what kind of psychological ramification does that give our young people, when they look at their desk that's been beat up, paint chips coming up off the wall, floors that are buckling up, all right, and they look at a charter school, brand new desk, brand new equipment, freshly, freshly painted classroom, that sends a real negative message, and that's why I'm here. Just say your name, what school you're from, and why you're here. Um, my name is Nikisha and I'm from East Bush Community Research School and we are here because many schools are being closed down and we want to fight for education because we always put education first. So you guys are ready for some civil disobedience basically? Yes. yes. <laughs> Great.